A very good evening to all of you and welcome to Baiju's exam prep, uh, the most comprehensive preparation app for all exams. So, um, as we all know that we are running uh, the Hindu editorial analysis and at 7 p.m. I am here with you. So, if I am audible and visible, uh, just write in the comment section that yes sir, you are audible uh, so that uh, we can start our class. Am I audible guys? Uh, so, yes sir. Okay, yes. So I think I'm audible. So let's uh, start. Uh, what we do in this series is actually, uh, I discuss some theory also, means uh, the Hindu newspaper, uh, let's say the first page. Uh, I mostly discuss the first page, then editorial page, any important articles, clipping of the editorial page, then world page. Okay, if there is important article or anything. Uh, then some uh, middle pages also sometimes uh, there are questions which are important. So that what I discuss and along with that I ask you questions also. So why do I ask questions? And uh, so that I want to know whether if you have read it, uh, whether you could answer it or not. And most of the questions are actually on the pattern of CLAT. I am 100% I'm, I'm sure enough that you must have gone through the new uh, the CLAT 2022 question paper. You should go through at least the last three years question paper 2020, 2021 and 2022. Because then only you will get the idea of which type of questions are being asked in exam. Yes, people are writing. Yes, sir. Uh, you are audible. Okay, fine. Yes, uh, Swamya Gujar. Uh, yeah, that will be important for you also. Yes, for MACT, LAT or any other examination, this analysis will be important, right? Yes. So, let's uh, start with uh, the first topic which came in uh, the first page in the Hindu today. Uh, I hope you are aware uh, there can be different articles uh, like say for our international page it was like this, Sri Lanka parties scramble to form all party government. So, this was an article by Meera Srinivasan. Uh, very similar articles were there in a uh, first page of the Hindu, uh, which was talking about uh, the people, the protesters storming inside the president's house and all it was coming in news, the protesters and all in Sri Lanka. I hope you are aware of this. Yes. So uh, there was an article in Reuters also Sri Lankan Prime Minister's office confirms president to resign after protest. So this is, you can say, uh, the president of uh, Sri Lanka. He is going to resign soon. Uh, you must have seen these images of Reuters and all that people entered inside the building of a president's house in Sri Lanka. So some people started, uh, you can say, swimming in the pool and all and uh, it was very much in the news. So that is why uh, it is an important topic. Now, uh, let's uh, see first uh, the geographical location of Sri Lanka. So here is India. Uh, if you go down south, here you will find the country called Sri Lanka. So if I am zooming it here, uh, the capital city of Sri Lanka is here called as Colombo. And there is one more capital uh, which is near to Colombo somewhere here. And that is called as Sri Jayavardhanepura Kote. So you can see it here. So this is Sri Jayavardhanepura Kote. Here is Colombo, the capital city. And near to it, you will find this Sri Jayavardhanepura Kote. So basically both... Uh, are the capital of Sri Lanka. Uh, some other famous uh, cities like you must have heard about this uh, Trinko Mali port. Uh, it remains in news because of various reasons. So go and find out why it is uh, very much in the news. Okay, then this northeastern, northeastern region is called as Jaffna province which, was, uh, which once was very much in the news. So you should have idea about these basic things. Uh, why I am asking, discussing these things because yes, the CLAT ask this type of question, whatever is in the news, what they do is they go in detail and ask a 360 degree about that topic. So that is why I am highlighting these terms, right? So uh, this was an article in Indian Express also, President's house is still occupied by protesters, all party meeting, etc. is happening and all. So uh, basically president, president, president is uh, uh, in the news. So the first question is, uh, who is the president of Sri Lanka who has decided to step down? Your options are Mr. Mahinda Rajapaksa, Gotabaya Rajapaksa, Ranil Vikramasinghe, none of the above. So since president is very much in the news, I mean president of Sri Lanka is very much in the news. Uh, so the first question is, who is the president of Sri Lanka? 
first decided to step down. Step down means uh, you can say resign or whatever you can say. So, uh, yes, some are saying B, some are saying C. Yes, uh, Gargi, Anusha, Srivastav, Anadi, Virenda, Smita, Utkarsh, Anisha, Pitambar, Pandey, Shasvi, Alephia, Ranganath. Both are logan say Devadrita, Kansha, Parul, Kajal, Kajal. So the right answer is uh, Gota Baya Raja Paksa is the president of Sri Lanka who has decided to resign. So this person is, uh, you can see it here, he is Gota Baya Raja Paksa. Please remember it, Gota Baya Raja Paksa. And he is the president of Sri Lanka who has decided to step down, means who has decided to leave the post. Okay, is it clear? Uh, yes, Anisha Das, very good. Mahinda Raja Paksa was the prime minister, very good. Uh, actually, both are brothers. Okay. And the main, the main powerful person was this person, and he was the prime minister. He resigned actually. He had to run away, in fact, from helicopter. You must have seen that video. And the new Prime Minister that was made was Ranil Vikrama Singhe. So he is the PM of Sri Lanka. Okay. And Gotabaya Rajapaksa was uh, the president. So he resigned first. Mahinda Rajapaksa, he ran away. Then Gotabaya Rajapaksa has also decided to resign. And in fact, the new Ranil Vikrama Singhe has uh, Ranil Vikrama Singhe, who is the PM, he himself has said that okay, I am also willing to leave. We can have some all party government, something like this means different uh, political parties should come together and form the government this is what he has said yes they are the right he is the pm yes anadi sahu you all are right so he is gotabaya rajapaksa the president of sri lanka who has decided to quit his brother is mahinda rajapaksa and he was very famous actually uh, so this is mahinda rajapaksa uh, the former you can say prime minister so you can see it here from 2019 to 22 he was the prime minister and i think a few weeks back he resigned okay and uh, making the way for Radil Vikramasinghe so he was made the prime minister I think very recently uh, two three weeks back and he has also said that let's come have a all party government so all the parties should come together and with the consensus should form the government and decide the economic crisis and all so go and read more about Mr. Mahinda Rajapaksa because uh, this is very very important uh, if you talk about him, he is considered as in the last 20 years one of the most powerful person of uh, Sri Lanka, Mahinda Rajapaksa. Okay, so he is now the former Prime Minister. Uh, why I am discussing it, if you see it carefully, he was the President of Sri Lanka for almost 10 years from 2005 to 2015. Okay, and not only that, in fact, uh, Prime Minister of Sri Lanka for 3 years from 2019 to 22. And you can see here also a little bit also. So. Uh, in 2004 to 2005 he was the president so if you see it he has a long tenure of uh, again say coming to power either as a prime minister or as a president okay yes yes Vabhav Singh yes he has been the prime minister and president again and again he is the uh, sixth time president right there, 2015 so he is considered as one of the most powerful person in the last 15 or 20 years okay so just have an idea because these things were coming in the news, the Prime Minister, the President, they can ask questions. Okay. Uh, the next question is, uh, what is the currency of uh, Sri Lanka? Your options are Nagaltra, Rupee, Rupiah, Kayat. So basically, I hope you are aware uh, that if you have seen the CLAT 2022 question, uh, Ukraine was in the news. So I told you that whenever something is in news, they go and ask 360 degree. So basically they asked what is the currency of Ukraine, they asked where is the capital, they asked who is the president, who is the, the president was formerly what, so he was formerly comedian and all. So that is the very reason I am highlighting this here also, since Sri Lanka is in news, you should be aware of who is the prime minister of Sri Lanka, who is the president of Sri Lanka, the former president of Sri Lanka, the person who was very much powerful, the capital of Sri Lanka, the currency of Sri Lanka, the things around it, Hamman Tota port, what is that, Trincomalee port, what is that, Jaffna region, what is that, go and find out these things, right. So basically, uh, the right answer, the currency of Sri Lanka is, yes, majority are right, they all have written a B, so Nal, Vaiba, Vyasha, Svit, Pitambar, Anadi, Anisha, Virendra, Virinda, Ranganath, you all are right. So B is the right answer. It's rupee. What we call it as, uh, it's more perfect to write Sri Lankan rupee. Uh, can anyone tell me uh, A is the option of which, uh, Nagaltram is the currency of which country? 
So yes, C is the currency of Europa is the currency of Indonesia. Uh, Ranganathan has written yes, this is the currency of Indonesia. Nagaltram is a currency of which country and Kayat is a currency of which country? I am waiting for your answers because these are currencies of our neighboring countries and since it is a currency of neighboring countries, you should be knowing it. What is the right answer? Nagaltram is a currency of anyone? Waiting for your answers? Yes, Bhutan, Sonal is right. Bhutan is the right answer. And uh, the Kayat is a currency of which country? Anyone? Uh, yes, uh, the Kayat is a currency of Myanmar. Okay, so just have an idea about it. Yes. Yes, one option is Bhutan. C ka rupiah is Indonesia. Kayat is Myanmar. So just have an idea about these things they can ask. Okay. Uh, guys, everyone, please press the like button, share and subscribe to our channel. Everyone. Yes. Yes, Akansha was right. Kayat is the currency of Myanmar. So yes, you can see Sri Lankan rupee is this. This is basically the 500 uh, Sri Lankan uh, rupee. Yes, you can see it here. Okay. Uh, let's move on. Yes, both Salaman and Myanmar answer kya Kansha Pitambara Nadi Asmita. You all were right. Yes. So one Sri Lankan rupee is 0.22 Indian rupee. So means Sri Lankan rupee is not in a very good state. You can see the uh, value is decreasing uh, there. You know? Now let's move on to the next one. In Sri Lanka, which of the following type of government exists? Your options are Westminster style, presidential style, constitutional monarchy, semi-presidential system. Since Sri Lanka is in news, you should be aware of these terminologies. Which type of system of government is there in Sri Lanka? Yes, there is democracy, uh, but which type of democracy? I am I'm waiting for your answers. Those who are watching, please press the like button, everyone. Everyone, yes. Yes, Lakshmi Gonapa is right. Very good. Anisha Das, Deba Drita. Anupma, Asmita Singh, Pandey, Anil, you all right. It's actually semi-presidential system is the right answer to this question. Westminster style is British style government, right, which you can find uh, similar in India. Okay, the parliamentary style, the presidential system you will find in USA mostly. Uh, constitutional monarchy is also similar for Britain and all. Okay. So, the most perfect answer is a D. Yes, Asmita Singh, Bhavani, you all are right. Presidential style means presidential form of government. Means uh, like for example in case of USA. Okay. Yes, Paritosh, I think it's very crystal clear. So, uh, the right answer to this question is a D. You can see on the Wikipedia page, in fact, it is mentioned unitary semi-presidential uh, republic and all. Okay. So, he's the president and he's the prime minister. He has decided to resign and all. Just have an idea about it. Uh, the next one is question number four, which says the majority ethnic group found in Sri Lanka is, your options are Sinhalese, Sri Lankan Tamils, Indian Tamils, Malayas. What is the right answer to this question? Yes, Ukraine is also semi-presidential. Very good, Anupma. Very good. So, uh, you should have idea about the religious uh, categories or the demography of Sri Lanka, the major ethnic group which is the majority ethnic group, minority ethnic group, major religious community, minor religious community. You should have an idea because Sri Lanka is coming in the news again and again. So that is how the CLAT expects you, right? Yes, the majority ethnic group found is, uh, yes, good, good, good. Uh, Anisha Das, Ranganathan, Virinda, Parul, Asmita, Gargi, uh, Yashasvi, Bhavani, Anupama, Lakshmi, Pitambar, Utkash, you all right. It's actually St. Halis is the right answer to this question. I think majority are right. Yes, Tamils are in minority. Yes, Anisha Das. So A is the right answer. You can see 74.9% or you can say around 75% are St. Halis. Then others you can see Sri Lankan Tamils, Sri Lankan Moose, Indian Tamils, they all are in minority. So majority community is uh, St. Halis. As far as religion is concerned, majority community is Buddhist around 70%. So just have an idea because yes, they can ask this type of questions also. Now, uh, the next one is we are going to discuss about is KP, KRS nearing full reservoir level. Uh, this was also in the news in the Hindu, uh, I think second or third page. Okay. So basically it was about Krishna Saga Dam and all. Okay. Uh, these types of article was in the news. So uh, basically, uh, you have to tell me uh, where do you find this Krishna? It's also called as Krishna Raja Sagar. 
so that is why they write it krs so krishna saga dam uh, what is correct about krishna saga dam it has uh, uh, you can say it has its reservoir is full that is what it came in news today in the hindu newspaper so i just want to ask ki uh, what is correct about krishna saga dam it is in the state of karnataka on godavari it is in karnataka state on kaveri river it is in telangana on godavari river it is in a state of bihar on ganga river what is the right answer anyone some people writing a some are writing b ranganathan and alefia yusuf ali has written b devadrita utkarsh nikam akansha sharma has also written b anyone else yes actually uh, those who have answered a b are actually right it is in the state of karnatak on kaveri river so uh, you can see it here this is called as krs krishna raja sagar uh, dam or whatever you can say it is a lake that creates the dam so basically i hope you are aware so here uh, the, if there is a dam so on the back side of it is a reservoir is created or a lake or a reservoir is created i hope you are aware okay so this is krs dam krishna raja sagar dam uh, they have written it uh, it is in the state of karnataka it is a gravity dam on the uh, confluence of a river kaveri so on the confluence of river kaveri with hemavati and lakshman tritha tributary so both the tributaries meet on kaveri so basically the right answer is kaveri in the state of karnatak on kaveri river so b is the right answer yes akansha sharma bhavani you all were right whosoever has answered b was right okay you can see mandya in karnatak so let me show you here so this is karnataka this one is karnataka right and this one is actually tamil nadu right so basically uh, let me uh, change the color to explain this uh, the river kaveri river goes like this yes and in fact there is a dispute of Ka on kaveri river between karnataka and tamil nadu so here before it you will find this krishna raja sagar dam okay i think it's very crystal clear hopefully uh, godavari you will find somewhere here like this yes it's in mostly in maharashtra and telangana and all region godavari is here krishna is something like this so basically it's like this here is godavari here is krishna and here is something kaveri so i've made a rough sketch uh, but it is most uh, likely like this. Okay, so Godavari, Krishna, and then Kaveri. Godavari, Krishna, and then Kaveri. Okay, yes. Uh, now let's talk about this person. I mean, he was very much in the news. Um, I think two or three days back uh, because of assassination and all. So uh, let's discuss about uh, Shinzo Abe, uh, Mr. Shinzo Abe. Uh, so there was an editorial which came in uh, the Hindu today: a death unforetold on assassination of. Shinzo Abe. So uh, basically, he was a popular prime minister, even if divisive politician who was no stranger. You should have gone through this, and uh, he became the prime minister for the second time in 2012 and all. So this is what he is discussing actually. So basically, he was the prime minister uh, from 2006 to 2007, almost for a year. Okay. And then uh, that is what he has written. The author has written that for the second time in 2012, he came to, uh, he became the prime minister and he remained for eight years. Okay. So in recent years, the longest prime minister uh, in Japan. Okay. So he remained the prime minister from 2012 to uh, the, uh, September 2028 years. So I think two years, uh, it's hardly one and a half years that, uh, uh, one and a half or two years um, when he left the post actually. So. Uh, that is what about him now not only that uh, in fact when i was reading more about him uh, actually uh, even before being a prime minister in 2006 so from 2005 to 2006 he was chief cabinet secretary also in japan also so just have an idea because since he was in the news uh, you should be aware of these minute details about him okay now uh, let's discuss about the political party to which he belongs why because yes it is important they can ask her so he was the president of liberal democratic party from 2012 to 2020 so you can see almost the same time when he was the prime minister of uh, second term in japan almost you can see some months can be here and there but yes from 2012 to 2020 he was the prime minister of japan and at the same time more or less he was the uh, president of the political party to which he belonged to 
so the name of the political party to which he belonged to is liberal democratic party from 2012 to 2020 hopefully i think it's very crystal clear uh, now uh, the uh, the liberal democratic party's president is uh, mr fumio kishida and he is currently the pm of japan i hope you are aware of this hopefully i guess you should be knowing it that the current prime minister of japan is mr fumio kishida okay now uh, let's discuss more about this day yes this is very important uh, why shinzo abe is considered as famous because he was famous for giving the concept of quad or what we call it as quadrilateral security dialogue or he initiated this so even if you have uh, read before his death also these things were mentioned in wikipedia uh, that quadrilateral security dialogue so here is quadrilateral security dialogue or what we call it as quad if you go to the wikipedia they have mentioned in the fourth line the dialogue was initiated in 2007 by japanese prime minister mr shinzo abe and then at that time australian prime minister john howard indian prime minister manmohan singh and u.s vice president dick cheney but you can see it here whenever you find about quad the first name that came to uh, uh, the prominence was mr shinzo abe so he was instrumental in promoting the quad and if you talk about today quadrilateral security dialogue or quad is very much in the news so that is why it becomes even more more important yes anadi sao yes anisha das you all are right so the next question is question number six which is based on the same question i mean same topic uh, which of the following is not the member of quad your options are usa japan india russia all of the above are members what is the right answer to this question i'm waiting for your answers so sonal has answered it d anyone else anadi has also answered it okay what are those four nations which are part of quad can you write in the live chat the four nations which are part of quad or quadrilateral security dialogue yes sonal upadhyay anadi debadrita gargi anisha alipia utkarsh virinda sita you all are right actually so basically us japan india is a part of it russia is not a part of it us japan india and australia and so these four are basically considered as quad nations or quadrilateral security dialogue nations yes us india australia japan good 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 uh, you all are not smart enough so uh, basically the right answer to this question is d because i was asking which of the following is not the member of quad so d is the right answer yes just have an idea about it okay uh, the next topic is also a very important topic it came in today's the hindu on i think on the national page yes which says army opens 20 bed field dressing station at galwan uh, so i hope you are aware of galwan valley i am uh, waiting for your answers where do you find this galwan valley right in the live chat i mean in which uh, border so is it loc is it LAC? Is it MacMohan line? Or is it Duran line? A, B, C, D are the options. Please answer it. Where do you find this Galvan Valley? So A, B, C, D. So let's call it as A option, B option, C option and D option. What is the right answer? Galwan Valley was very much in the news in 2020, 2020, I think in June. They asked a question even in CLAT last year also about Galwan Valley. So since Galwan is again in news, they can uh, ask again. So where do you find? Yes, LSE, very good. Yes, Sita, Pandey, Anisha, Asmita, Sakshi, Akansha, you all are right. You will find this so option B is correct. You will find in line of actual control region. So the article says first ad hoc facility ad hoc you can say means a temporary type right first a temporary facility at an altitude of 14,000 feet so at the height of 14,000 feet in Ladakh uh, you can say to treat gunshot, gunshot wounds so means it will be a sort of a temporary type hospital a small makeshift hospital you can say if uh, any unfortunate incident happen of gunshot or something like this so to aid or you can say a first aid type you can say so that is why it was very much in the news and yes they have mentioned that uh, 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 two years back uh, we had some uh, unfortunate incident so that is why 
uh, we should have uh, we should be prepared for such thing right that is what it says so here yes eastern ladakh you can say virinda sharma right so this is a ladakh union directory and let me zoom it so here you will find this line of actual control right and here actually is this location is galwan valley okay yes okay uh, the next one is question number seven which talks about what are cheetah and chetak your options are fighter aircraft army helicopter indigenous aircraft carrier submarine for navy this was also very much in the news in the hindu so that is why i'm asking it uh, whosoever is watching please press the like button everyone guys anyone what are cheetah and chetak yes good devadrita sankriti uh, devadita anisha pitambar yashasvi alefia gargi all are right uh, why it was in the news can you tell me why i am asking this question anyone i am waiting for the answers it came in the hindu today and cheetah and chetak were in the news actually yes they are army helicopters so basically uh, the article was about these helicopters have become old and we need to replace it with some better one so like the better one can be uh, 2260 right so there was an article uh, that army aviation augments combat power while aging cheetah chetaks await replacement so we are expecting that cheetah and chetak helicopter needs to be replaced with uh, the newer or modern version right so like for example ka 2260 we are doing this agreement <coughs> with russia to buy this helicopter okay that is called as ka2260 helicopter yes anisha das very good because they are very old government going to replace yes uh you can see last year also in december it was in the news that we are going to have one billion dollar russian helicopter deal and that was uh, about the same ka2260 uh, okay this helicopter uh you should be knowing it that this is a helicopter which can be asked now the next important news was china pakistan begins war games of shanghai so <coughs> basically is a joint exercise between china and pakistan uh, it's a four day navy exercise <coughs> sorry it's a navy exercise between china and pakistan <coughs> sorry uh, which was very much in the news so here is india uh, here is china on the east side here you will find shanghai okay so in this shanghai city the Pakistan and Chinese Navy uh, did a joint exercise, four-day Navy exercise. And you should be knowing the name of it. In fact, in Times of India also, this article was in the news. So let's see the name at least. Uh, it is called as Sea Guardians 2. This was a drill or military a Navy exercise happened between Pakistan and Chinese Navy at the Shanghai coast. Shanghai, I've told you, here is Shanghai, the, uh, one of the famous city, port city of China. Sia, uh, Sai Sipra Nayak, you should read the important editorials. Okay, so whatever editorials I am discussing here, you can understand that those editorials are important. Okay, you will, if you uh, watch, keep on watching my classes, you will get to know that which editorial is important, which is not. So that is how you should do. Okay, so guys, everyone, please press the like button, comment, share, and subscribe to our channel. <coughs> Sorry. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for watching and download the Baiju's exam prep app. There are a lot of sessions there also. Thank you everyone. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.